restrained and with a blindfold over his eyes. Josh Cleaver was moments away from becoming the third victim of an infamous serial killer. Less than a meter away, monster Bruce MacArthur stood with a cold, dead look in his eyes and a knife in his hand. Deciding whether the terrified Canadian would live or die. Josh was lucky to survive. MacArthur, now 71, whose crimes were discovered five years later in 2017, had already suffocated eight victims in his 19th floor Toronto apartment. The murderer, who chillingly worked at Christmas as a shopping mall Santa Claus, predominantly targeted gay men, and his atrocities have been compared to those of serial killers Jeffrey Dahmer and Britt Dennis Nilsson. To avoid detection during his seven-year killing spree, MacArthur dismembered the bodies of his victims and buried them in his friend's garden where he worked as a landscaper. The victims were only identified due to six souvenirs he kept on a USB stick, photos of the men before and after he killed them. MacArthur was sentenced to life imprisonment in 2018 and his vile rams are the focus of a new BBC3 documentary series, Santa Claus, The Serial Killer. Reflecting on the 2012 terrifying ordeal, Josh believes he was spared because he had loved ones who knew his whereabouts. He told the son, he asked if anyone knew I was there. I told him my boyfriend and I kept track of where each other were all of the time and that's when he had a flip out. Looking back, I definitely think it was because he didn't want anyone to notice I'd gone missing. I actually think that might be a big reason why I'm still alive today. He stood there holding a knife. Josh, who earned money as a sex worker, went to MacArthur's flat in 2012 after the killer had responded to his Craigslist advert. Struggling with drug addiction at the time, the survivor went to the flat but didn't initially comprehend the extent of the danger he faced. He was tied up and blindfolded, like MacArthur's other victims, as part of a sex game, but ensured he could pull the face covering off. He recalled, I got it down right as he came out from the kitchen, he was just standing there holding a knife. I remember thinking it was weird but I still didn't really think I was in danger. Realizing Josh had someone who knew where he was, MacArthur appeared to change his mind about the attack and offered to take him for breakfast. However, he believes it was part of a ploy to check whether he was aware of the fact that he could have been murdered. I noticed he had stopped talking and he was just looking at me. With a very cold dead look in his eyes that I hadn't seen up until this point, Josh recalled. The only other time I saw that look was when I got my suitcase from him days later. The look in his eyes probably scares me more than anything to this day and I will never forget it. I don't think he'll ever fully get over what happened. Master Manipulator While Josh got away, others were not so lucky. His victims were, Andrew Kinsman, 49, Salim Essan, 44, Skandaraj Navaratnam, 40, Abdul Basir Fayazi, 44, Kirushna Kumar Konigaratnam, 37, Dean Lysovic, 47, Saroj Makmoudi, 50, and Majid Kehan, 58. Documentarian Mabin Ashar believes MacArthur chose vulnerable people, including immigrants, drug users, and those closeted due to their religion or family, to prolong his killing spree. He told The Sun, Bruce MacArthur was an anomaly and a psychopath. And if we're to learn anything it's that we need to safeguard individuals and reduce vulnerabilities. It will require difficult conversations about the police, gay culture, drugs and religious communities. MacArthur's reason for killing is unknown. Judge John McMahon believed it was for his own warped and sick gratification but some have claimed it was due to his past. In the late 90s, MacArthur got divorced and moved out of the family home he shared with his children after allegedly being outed by a gay lover. A former pal, who didn't want to be named, told the documentary, it was probably quite traumatic. He enjoys, men, sexually but other than that I'm sure he blames them for the way his life turned out. 
Mabim described the killer as a master manipulator and recounted how he managed to avoid detection, even after nearly killing a man. In 2001, Mark Henderson had to fight for his life after MacArthur attacked him with a metal bar after accidentally letting him into his apartment block in Toronto. He compared the attacker to a reptile, full of rage and suffered a fractured skull, broken fingers and a broken arm. Mark said, he was going to kill me. There was no doubt in my mind. Brought to trial over the incident in 2003, MacArthur apologized and said my life has been a mess. Meanwhile, his victim was called foolish for letting him in and was demonized for being a former sex worker. The judge concluded the attacker was a pretty good person and someone who made a mistake this particular day. MacArthur received one year's house arrest, a two-year ban from the gay village, and three years probation, and the conviction was wiped from his record. Mabim claims the killer slipped through the net multiple times, something police vehemently deny. In 2016, MacArthur tried to strangle a man to death in his van. When quizzed by police he insisted his lover liked it rough and was released without charge. Three years earlier, he admitted to having known and had sex with two of his victims, but was treated as a witness rather than a suspect as no bodies had been found. In 2011, local police officer Marie Catherine linked two of the missing men to Sliver Fox 51. A man on the gay dating profile Scruff, later discovered to be MacArthur. She reported it to Toronto Police, which they deny, and states the connection absolutely could have ended the massacre sooner. Close Call Capture in 2018, MacArthur was finally apprehended shortly after the disappearance of his final victim, Andrew Kinsman. Police found a posted note on his calendar saying Bruce and spotted a red van picking him up on CCTV that was traced back to the killer. They discovered that MacArthur had sold his vehicle to a scrapyard for way. Under the asking price and after seizing it found a small amount of Andrew's blood. It made him a suspect in the presumed murder. Because Andrew's body had been discovered, but there was not enough evidence to arrest him. MacArthur was put under surveillance and police were granted permission to raid his apartment, where they copied about half of his computer. They soon found 18 photos of Andrew's dead body in the killer's van, and other images showing victim Salem Messon lying dead in his bed while police were working out when to arrest him. Surveillance teams spotted MacArthur taking a young man, known only as John, into his apartment block. Detective David Dickinson was among the arresting officers who barged their way into the flat in the nick of time. He recalled, we pushed our way into the apartment. The person he was with was in the bedroom in Bruce MacArthur's bed, he had a blindfold on his face and he was bound. Six souvenirs. MacArthur was arrested and on his computer cops found nine folders with his victims' names. And John, inside were photos from their social media profiles. Sickeningly, he took snaps of their genitals, and even arranged some corpses in a fur coat. And with the rope and metal bar used to kill them. MacArthur kept other mementos, including one victim's personalized bracelet and missing person posters for a man he had killed. Filmmaker Mabin explained, it's stranger than fiction, you couldn't make this stuff up, it's too grim and weird frankly. It was stuff from a horror movie, he would save all of these pictures like six souvenirs. To murder is one thing but to catalogue your